<laughs> yes, yes, because um, you know how people just forget stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, the commentary we're seeing with is that spike in activity. Yeah? Uh, and I, I'll use uh, an example without calling the name of a particular institution. Well, it's a business. Um, while um, during the course of my work, I've seen um, an institution, I think I may have told you the story before. It's a mom and pop store. Yeah? Located somewhere, and I ain't call the name of the place, Village Road. And mm -hmm. um, the store probably is about a little bigger than this room, if that. But in one year, it was able to pull in $2 million. Mm -hmm. Any red flags is yet. And then you start thinking about, okay, you want to do a side visit. Sometimes you can get out of your four walls, too. Mm -hmm. if, if it's not applicable for you offshore, but I mean local, if you start to see some stuff in trends outside of the profile. A couple of loaves of bread, some cream, you know, the phone cards maybe, but um, not realistically to generate two million. I know what they sell it. But, um, you know, you go there and take a little peek. You just pretend you go to buy a little bit. And just look around, you know. That place was a man of two million. Maybe during the course of the life, 20 years later, but no, that ain't realistic. Um, especially with the profile, and the bird receipt saying something else. Mm -hmm. So you do your little research, you do some, make some calls and whatever. Uh, you know, when you call your friends that every MLR doesn't have the capacity, I guess, because you don't have the relationship to call a DU, especially if they don't know you. But I guess the, I have the luxury because I work with these guys. So they would say, um, Okay, let, let us give you a little background on this poison. It ain't so much um, from that establishment, but it's the family ties. Mm -hmm. that, that's the receipt behind that they involved in drugs. So yeah, you, you're the MLR, what, what do you do? You're talking about cooperation now. You call your, you know, offline contact and they tell you something like that. What, what do you do? Hey, hey what's up? Do you put that poison on some watch list, perhaps? Do you closely monitor that poison? Do you exit the relationship? Sometimes uh, you are asked for advice from the authorities. Okay, what do you suggest? You know? And they, they would say something like, okay, um, the poisons are still being monitored. Don't do anything to perhaps tip them off. You remember that word, tipping off a lot? Because you don't want to compromise an investigation. However, we'll serve you with a monitoring order, so you will let us know the activity. So on a weekly base, monthly base, they feel like a snitch. Yeah? But you're cooperating with law enforcement. You're not a snitch. <laughs> Sorry? That's the very definition of a snitch. Someone who's cooperating with but law enforcement. But you as a MLR, you know how this thing works. You know how this thing works. Who are you going after? Your job is to be a snitch. Well, I would, not be. No matter what you call it. I would say snitch, snitch because it's a regulatory position. Yes, you have regulatory connections. <laughs> so you, you're the eyes and ears of the institution protecting not just the institution yourself, and they always say the jurisdiction. So you have to sort of report. Failure to report, they always talk about you know the jail time and the fines and all the penalty and all that good stuff. And the question that came up to that, um, uh, supposedly is that they protection for the MLRs. Yeah, yeah. We've been talking about protection for MLRs from the 2001. We're no closer to getting that. What do you mean protection? Um, you can be um, victimized because sometimes some MLRs or some institution they got to go through management before they can file a report. Uh, sometimes they would um, um, dump or uh, dumb down reports. They say, hey, you don't need to report all of this. We need mm -hmm. to protect our image. You know, we don't need a scandal or the whole world. We need a real deal with that at a senior management level. You're just a rubber stump. Then. So you're not really effective. Yeah? And the question, oh, thank you, sir. No problem. All right. So the question always is asked, how effective is your program if you've never actually reported anything? It's glowing. It's good when you go to boards, oh, we, not, we didn't have anything. But you know better than that. You, you got more criminals running in and out of there. Uh, the story of Dank's Bank. I don't know if you're following that one. I know number five. And number, I'm sorry. I issue would know about that one with that um, Dank's Bank. Um, they had more than 1,000 cases where... Um, they suspected poisons involved in criminal activity. And the MLRA ain't reported. I mean, like, I mean, that's like maybe once, maybe twice. Yeah, you get away with that. But then you start them with a thousand? A thousand? If you read the story, they were up to $200 billion went through their institution. 
and they suspect that was involved. I mean, we ain't talking a million no more. 200 billion, that's our deficit how much times? We'll pay our deficit a couple times, right? Eh? At one institution. FIU's law enforcement, they depend on us, and you have to cooperate. And I'll tell you this much uh, from experience. Um, build relationships, yeah? I tell you to go work with the police, but at the same time, it's good to have a good working relationship with them, especially with people from your, no, you ain't got to know everyone in CDU. The people, the movers and shakers, such as your fraud squad, they investigate suspicious activity, and when it comes to the DEU, the tracing and four features, tra tracing the four features, four features section. I started a trend with my team. Hey, what's up, girl? I started a trend a couple of years back with my team. Um, on an annual basis, I would take the whole team at least once to DU, and we do like a little meet and greet because the team at DU changes so often. Uh, I just wanted to get a uh, hands-on as to what happens behind the scene and also with the, tri um, the commercial crime section for CDU. So I would take them and I said, listen here, you, not, you may not know Aisha, but once you, you hear her name again, um, and if I'm not there, she is your point person. Yeah, you have a go-to person at my, this institution. So it, it's good too because you get out a lot, a lot of situations where they will g keep you in the loop as to what's going on. Um, they have um, access to databases you don't have. You may have to do, you, you, all, you always depend on your little oil check, your little Lexus Nexus. They got some stuff there that a uh, little, little broader than that. So a lot of times um, I would have to reach out. Uh, my boss more stressed me, oh, could you call the people that? I said, well, you, don't, you don't know no people that? Could you call the intelligence unit at the EU? I said, well, who you know that they you be, don't be broadcasting that? I call them, you know? That's on the download. Yeah? Stuff like that. They they don't want to promote that, you know. They but they they love that kind of open door relationship. Sometimes they'll call me up and say, "Look here, I got this fella I'm interviewing, and he's saying that he only have um, ten thousand on his account. It came from X, Y, and Z. So in real time, they'll stop the interview. I I just had a case like that um, Thursday. Thursday pass. They said, "Look here, we talk. We right now be in the process of beating. I'm mean, interviewing this fella, right? <laughs> and we just trying to what." <laughs> We're interviewing this fella, right? Why you keep laughing, Bishop? <laughs> no, I'm saying interviewing the fella. They interview it. It's being recorded, you know. So they interviewing the fella, so they pause and they call me, hey Taylor, I said, what's up? You got a count for this fella, so and so and so. And I say, hold on, let me check. I say, um, yeah, I got something there. And they say, okay, um, he's saying X, Y, and Z. You get it, you could um, substantiate that. Uh, hold on. No boy. Mm -mm. That making no sense. That's all we need to hear. Well, you know, the phone going there. I say, yeah, they have been church again. So, um, <clears throat> that's another. We we'll talk about that one. Yeah. They quote me on the on that mess. But um, yeah. So they would need sometimes to do, um, refute some claims made by suspects sometimes, and it could be someone who may be attached to your institution, especially if it's local. Because a lot of times, it's a lot of stuff, because they would call me, hey, we're getting ready to go in this interview. Um, Ginger's saying this, X, Y, and Z, the money came from so-and-so, and so and she got supporting documentation, and source of funds, everything is at maybe your institution. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Sometimes they'll pick your brain on um, how bank operate uh, procedures that they may not be aware of. So when we do have that face-to-face, -face, it's good. You know how much speeding tickets and stuff I got out of, and then whatever, they're like, why are they going? Back in the day, when I was um, with them, my, everyone have a nickname. Uh, my nickname back then was uh, Rob Taylor. It's a long story. But the short version was that my initials, Randy A. Taylor. So mm -hmm. the, the nickname was Rob Taylor. I go on through this, um, uh, you know, when they're doing the road check and everything, bright light guy, come out the car. Uh, oh, that's Rob. Yeah, but go away, you going? Yeah. Crazy kid, go home, boy. It's late. It's late. See y'all later, you know. Fight crime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was riding one time out there, you know, when your car ain't up to date, you know, you're riding dirty. Yeah, they're like, and then this young officer, he came there, you know, you gotta. That's right. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, all right. And I almost started writing a ticket, but then he had gone, but go with your business. I said, yeah, charge you to give me a ticket. <laughs> but um, it's good when you make those contacts sometimes, they can save your butt sometimes contacts with the Attorney General's office. 
sometimes they'll call and say, okay, you have um, 14 days to produce this information. I have relationships there. I'll call up, let's just say, um, let me make up a name, Ken Renewy. So when my girl's down there, she wants to prosecute us. I say, hey, Ken, where are you looking at? I ain't getting around to doing that right now. Now I think I what, two days left? What, what you want from this house? house? <laughs> um, I, I want um, um, sheep and, and make sure they put a roll this time. And I don't want no Johnny Gagas. So, all right, look, look at me. <clears throat> Bribery. <laughs> I got another two weeks. You have to have relationships. If you don't know anybody in this talk, well, it's good to have relationships. Yeah? And they will give you background information. I mean, you do it in the spirit of fighting crime. But at least you have the, you know, the relationships. So cooperating with law enforcement, better cooperation and transparency are critical. Since 9-11, increased cooperation between law enforcement and financial institutions has made it possible to track and identify terrorists through their financial transactions. We know that. I gave you a scenario where they use their debit cards, money's being wired in, they paid for um, resources, whether it was supplies and all that stuff. I think I gave you the, the example with the two brothers. You remember the brothers and the, in Boston bombing? I don't know if you all remember that. I think it was like three years now or four years. The Boston Marathon bombers, mm -hmm. the two brothers, and the monies again came in from Saudi Arabia. <clears throat> That's always a red flag to me. So was I in the Middle East. I'm like, okay, where? Came in from the Middle East, went to their debit card, and it was, the FBI was so in. Hey, what's up? What's up, Ms. Eddie? <laughs> so they were able to um, put together a whole investigation from the debit card. The debit card showed where monies came in. You could, you could, and then of course, when they went to Walmart, <clears throat> my store, don't play with Walmart. They go on to Walmart, and when they went to Walmart, they purchased the microwaves, the timers, the nails, and the fertilizer. What that right there represent? That's a crude bomb, that's an IED. So once you put metal in the microwave with the fertilizer, what happened with the timer? It, the microwave will explode. <clears throat> yeah? It will explode and the fertilizer, it sticks. Heated uh, fertilizer. So don't tell me I go make nothing up now. I'm just saying, if you got the combination of fertilizer, nails, microwave. Hold on, right now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, look here. <laughs> nothing but the devil. So the, 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 the investigation showed where they went and the timeline. So when they start. <coughs> Start saying stuff like me, it wasn't me, but it's your debit card. Unless it was stolen, they well, maybe my car was stolen, okay. We saw the footage from Walmart. You know when you know when the receipt they'll have the date and the time and all that stuff, so the location. And then the show where they went to the train station and they swipe their card and you get a receipt. So everything is timed and they have CCTV. And when they look at all the footage, it's just like do you see how financial information can tell the whole story? Yeah? Whole oh, story. And that's what we're trying to get now. Imagine when we start getting those um, digital currency. It's supposedly even better. Well, supposedly is the word. Hey, what's up? Okay. <clears throat> so, you see why it's important now in terms of cooperation? Because law enforcement to put together this puzzle, they would have to come to you as the financial institution. Yeah? You could be the missing piece of the puzzle, or <clears throat> you may see something during the course of your transaction monitoring. Um, it's not snitching. When you make your um, intelligence report by way of SDR, and they see that, along with what they already may know. Yeah? I remember being at the FIU, and we would have scenarios, and I said, boy, this ain't making no sense. And then I would see a, a suspicious report coming from a, another financial institution. I said, okay, all right. He had an account there. Okay, well, okay, this would make sense with this. Okay. That same little piece of insignificant um, information or documentation you may have, and you make that report, could be the missing piece of a puzzle. Yeah? <clears throat> and when in doubt, you could actually call them. So don't feel as if there's this Chinese wall of the barrier. You could actually pick up the phone and say, hey, Smitty, what's up? I'll run something by you offline. What's your thoughts on this? And he'll say, boy, I think that should be a report you want to file with us. Yeah? You can have those type of... Um, communication. <clears throat> um, track and identify terrorists through the financial transactions. International drug cartels, multinational money laundering schemes are being um, thwarted or shut down as a result of these cooperative cooperation efforts. I see that a lot with the um, also with the fraud on the EU. 
because I mean, shoots. I, I'm just working with, I guess, having a pass with them, but now, think about this for a second. <clears throat> when they call you up, they'll say something like, um, Bishop, we have these five poisons on our radar. What does that do for you at your institution? That's I mean, you with intelligence you didn't have. They will say, hey, be, on the, be watching this poison, these five poisons, we suspect them. Um, do you have them in your books? So now when they give you that information, you, you have an intelligence you didn't have before. Yeah? Or they'll say, okay, don't close this person's account. If, <clears throat> if you get a call, yeah, Delores, you get a call from, let's just say, the Assistant Commission of Crime, and he says, Delores, there's an individual by the name of John Doe, account number 201-65837. It's at your institution. Just give me a heads up every month as to what's happening on the account. You see any red flag there? Yeah. Of all the people in the Bahamas, you get the assistant commissioner calling you and giving you an account number mm -hmm. and saying to keep an eye on this account. We watching it. Or do you call them and say, okay, we're getting ready to do a sting operation. <clears throat> and I don't like when they call, uh, they, they give me, I said, boy, anyhow, it's good to know. Because I mean, I already start packaging up my stuff and I already start monitoring because I know we're coming next. Mm -hmm. More than likely you can get a production order. And I will tell you, I got off from work. You know, you're going home after a long day. You get your little, you know, frosted flakes and milky, home chilling and everything, right? And I see the news. In the news tonight, so and so go out. And the second they just call and ask me what am I said, look at this foolishness, eh? Mm. And then you want, you say, okay, yes, there they go. But you can't go bragging about that because you'd be finding somebody floating because, you know, you're like, I won't say the snitch, but the person who played a part in that. Many times I did that when I saw him, I said, oh, yeah, I had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I contributed to that. And it's not a good thing to go bragging that you're the MLRO. Um, and I, they, they actually, when we used to park, oh, I almost gave away where I was working, at a certain location where I was um, parked. You may know yet, because I never say. So, um, where they had me parked, and you all go up the day, put on, on, on Randy Taylor MLRO. I'm like, what you, you broadcasting this thing? And I'm like, what? No, no, no. I go on there one morning, like five o'clock. You should see me breaking up the people's eye. I say, no, boy. Mm -mm. Don't try and lock me away. No. I had an experience once, I think I told you about this, where we had a, a young lady who was trying to onboard with us. But we do have something at my institution, it's called an internal caution list. It's a blacklist, people that we don't want to touch. Yeah? So um, the account opening officer, had the lady in the front of her, and they were on the phone going back and forth. So um, I, I'm telling the account opening officer, ain't nothing happening. He ain't opening that account. Hell, freeze old voice. Yeah? Ain't nothing happening. So she said, what do you want me to tell the customer? I said, um, no. How hard is that? N-O. Period. No problem? Okay, yeah. So after that, you know, you go with your business, sitting down on my desk, drinking my little tea, eating my little cheese and bread sandwich. Bring, phone ring, bring. Calling me at almost four o'clock because you know, when you see 4 30 come, I the government employees, I ready to go home. So, the lady, um, uh, hello, Mr. Taylor. I say, Yes, um, you, Mr. Taylor, from compliance. I like, you know, the first question I normally ask because I don't know if this is uh, a walk mentality. I also ask, but, Hold on, uh, is it in Commonwealth Bank, right? She said, No, I said, Okay, go ahead. This is he. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a little one there with them, uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, there are ways of catching you, right? So I was like, yes, go ahead. She said, Mr. Taylor, um, why didn't you want to open the account for me? And first and foremost, ain't no one in your business or company supposed to be uh, divulging, hey, Aisha's the MLRO, <clears throat> Delores is the MLRO, Ginger, Eddie and I ain't no one business. You, you could be playing around with someone, you would put someone's life at risk doing foolishness like that. Mm -hmm. So after that, I had to do a communication to all staff. Please, in future. <clears throat> and, the, and the young lady who's the CSO, while she was talking to me about the poison, right, saying, and, oh, the poison, and she's on our caution and all that stuff, she had the customer right in front of her. Have enough sense to walk away. Um, yeah, I mean, you ain't trying to take bread out of no one mode, but I mean, at the same time, you can't do stuff like that. But, you know, they say, yes, yeah, so, so that that's a danger. You can because you know in some territories, 
MLROs actually carry firearms. And my friend from there, who just walked in, he'll tell you that because it's serious business. The MLROs, when I was down in um, Colombia, they carry firearms. That's how serious, but you know, in the Bahamas, you know, we, we talk about, we, we hate you or whatever, but sometimes you never know. We, we, you know, we say we all oh, do this and that, eh, we only mouth. But then you never know, because, shoot, they're going to go on those killing people, so you never know what could happen next. Mm -hmm. The day could come and someone had make this click. Whenever you're talking about taking the, the private of some of their assets, you don't play around with some things like family, church, politics, and money. Some things you don't fool around with, and I, I fool around with people with money. It's a risky job, and that's why you should be talking about protection for MLROs. It's very important. I was at the ENY seminar this week, <clears throat> and the panelists were saying, and I was, I was like, she got me all motivated. She said, and um, the lady who's the uh, country head, <clears throat> country manager for ENY, she said that, well, what do you guys expect? And they were talking about the challenges for the banking system. She said, you, you want to bring in an MLR and give them a $30,000 job? Well, you'll get a $30,000 performance. You need to pay these people money. And he's like, you, know, you say don't clap, right? <laughs> We're clapping, boy. He's like, yeah. I like what she's saying. She's like, what you expect? And that's why it's a brain drain, you know, people moving around. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't, what, sorry, no, what was that? What? No, sorry. No, it's a true story. Huh? Inside you. Company <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ain't about me, though. No, no, no. Okay, let's make it sure. Thank you, you look at me. No. I enjoy it, maybe. I think it's about you, you <laughs> Yeah, they got a chance. So again, as the financial institution, they hold a lot of critical information. You're a depository for a lot of information. All these transactions, you've already KYC the client. You're doing every, you're almost like a one-stop shop for law enforcement. I could go to a particular institution, I could get photo ID, where to find the person, uh, how long they've been at this place, if they got credit, their, their job history. All the transaction which has timelines attached to them, their spending habits, their habits. Your financial information says so much about you. It says how much, how many times a year you travel, what you buy, when you buy your little dirty magazines, uh. when you when you do, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, well, I mean, hear it out. Um, I've looked through some statements before with some of you know, when I was an analyst back in the day. Like, oh, <laughs> you used to buy dirty magazines. You're looking at the <laughs> credit card history. <laughs> people, you just see all the stuff. Because it's there. You can actually build a, a profile on the person. Mm -hmm. so, you know, because when that information goes to, let's just say, we talk about co cooperation. Think about it. When you go there, that information goes to those officers in drug enforcement, they interview in the person. We had a fellow there, and the superintendent, Christopher... Ramming? Ramming. I think, yeah, Christopher Ramming. <clears throat> he was so good at that. Remember I, told, I was telling you about the interview? He would always ascertain who the person's parents were. He wants to see that financial information. So he know that, you know, you, you get your little dirty magazine on different stuff. And he would always, he, he was one of the best actors in the police force. He would come into that interview. What's going on here? I was like, oh, shit. Chris in the past. We know he was pretending that we were just going along with it. What's going on here? Son, they got you here as a suspect. Um, they, they feed you for the day? <laughs> no, sir. Y'all, tell me what y'all doing to this man. <laughs> you got a man sitting down here on the bench all day and y'all ain't feed him yet? This don't make no sense. Come to my office, man. Come, let's come to my office. You know what I mean? He's like, uh, he, come to my office. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And we like, sorry, but that superintendent is more. I don't want to hear that from y'all. God damn it, he got feelings. I mean, like, okay, he's like, okay. So he put the fella in the office, and he's sitting down, he's talking to the fella, and he's like, I'm son, this don't make no sense, but I don't want you in here longer than you need to be in here, right? Oh, Lord. Hi, your mom. How pretty me that? Oh, you know my mother? Yeah, I know your mom. Pretty me, right? And your daddy, right. Joshua? Right. Yeah, yeah, man. You, you come from good stock, man. Right. I, I saw this, you in this me? kind of mess. <laughs> I mean, I know you did one or two little crazy things in the day, see. I know you're just going to read them in magazines. Yeah? But, yeah, but yeah, we all have our advice. So you just feel like, okay, okay, he can connect with me. He, he know my parents. He know my little friends. And you're like, okay. Damn it, give this man something neat. What you want, son? I remember we were at Oaksville, our old building. I don't know, mm. opposite COB. Mm. And he's like, Taylor, come, 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 come. Come on, being here all day. I'm, what, you, son, you want something from McDonald's? You, you like McDonald's? What you want? I said, yeah, I'm taking money in my wallet to make sure you get something. Get that man out. Well, what, a quarter pounder? 
You want cheese with that? Get him a quarter pound of a cheese. Oh, you know, like I'm a cheese. But get him a quarter pound of a cheese and a drink. Biggie sizing. So the fellow's sitting down eating. He's really like, I got a friend now. <laughs> Listen here. When you go to CID, CDU, DU, you ain't got no friends. The only thing you be trying to do is get information from you right. and wrap up this case. But he thought he had a friend. You know, and he was like, okay. Son, yeah, I, I just, you know, it's a clear thing. You just tell me what took place, right? And I got to write your story. Taking a statement. And then he just playing along. Yeah, yeah. No. A possible, we don't, uh, what they don't want in it, they would, you know, be only one to find. They redacted it. Uh, yeah, we redacted it. We go with that. So we, um, they would t take the statement from him based on the information you gave, Intel what they have. So, son, I, I see what you're saying, right? So, level with me, man. You, you, you know what you did is wrong. I can forgive you. And most important, Jesus can forgive you. Okay? So you know you did wrong, right? Yeah, I did wrong. You see, I, I mean, I, I protect you from them, right? So you 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 won't confess. Just let me know and let me let you go. You know, five o'clock, but just don't do it again. Okay, so I I, I admit it. I did die wrong. Okay, no problem. Just tell me what happened. And just just so for for my edification. Give me the story. I just need you to sign off right here. Sign off. Okay. Oh. He said, okay, well, uh, five o'clock. So you said I could leave. Leave mm -hmm. where? Why you going in the forest cell? Like that walks in. Why you was a criminal? You going? Oh, you was a criminal. Bad actors. And I, I thought you was to beat the fellas to get this confession. Nobody side, gets beat. It's good to know that you're nobody no, no, ever got to be. I I was there for many years, and I've never seen no one get beat. You said you said the right I've thing. never seen yes. anyone got beat in CID before. <laughs> never. They had a lot of accidents happening in CID. People get very clumsy when they go there. People walk in the doors. I seen a guy throw himself down the stairs. And I said, why would a human do that? I mean, like, why would you just jump head down on the face down the stairs? That makes no sense to me. But I've seen some of them going to Bank Lane, you know, hobbling and what I said, well, that's the one who jumped down the stairs, right? That don't make no sense to me. Truth be told, though, I've seen, I started on interviews where this, um, this young guy, I wouldn't say young, he's probably in his 30s, he said that, I wouldn't lie, yeah, yeah, I, I'll be honest with you. I did rape the girl. And so, I mean, you like, you know, you, you, you trying to stake a pose and all that stuff. The tell you get the information, you, don't, you, you know, if you just want to break his legs and whatever, you know. If, I've heard points, seen people um, confess when they say they molested children. And I mean, how do you stake a pose with that, you know? And I wouldn't lie, sometimes one or two people do get some stuff happen to them in CID. Ain't no one they right mind to sit down and have someone tell you what they did with a little child. No. Or what they did. Fly right. And how they terrorize people and all that stuff. And they plot and all that stuff. And you sitting down and you just taking the information and what's not. So sometimes you're human. Because then I mean, you got mothers, you got sisters, or whatever. And you sure don't right. want someone to do crazy stuff. And boy, back in the day, we used to do. So um, the financial institutes the whole critical information. See, y'all ain't going to lock me up. I did some stuff oh. in CID and I already made my peace with God. Um, water baptized, Holy Ghost filled, so that's my pass. I'm a good boy now. So, keep the big picture in mind. Criminal takes advantage of the financial system. They work together. When someone goes to Fox Hill, you know what happens up there? You get a degree in uh -huh. crime. They cooperate. Just like how financial institutions need to cooperate with the law enforcement. What you think you're going to be doing up there all the years? You ain't going to be watching cable. These guys learn from their mistakes. If I'm up there for, let's just say, 16 years for armed robbery, and I'm around just a room of armed robbers, you know what I'm going to be learning? How not to make that mistake again and how to improve on my product. So when you see them come out and you see some stuff change in patterns and behavior, these fellas, they, that's a, that's a university of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And think about it. You're in a room with, with three, four other guys. What do you talk about for 16 years anyhow? Mm -hmm. I mean, I get run after the first week, I'm like, wait, I need new roommates? Why do I get to see you for 16 years? Boy. What are you talking about? I mean, yeah. it don't make no sense, but it is what it is. I don't know why I'm in a rush to get up there, you know, I mean, tin roof, same three roommates, you share the same little bucket. I don't make no sense, but mm -hmm. I don't know. So criminals take advantage of the financial system, but they also leave clues. Criminal always, criminals always leave clues behind. Uh, sometimes they're latent, maybe hidden. I remember when I was to work in the, um, the scenes of crime section um, at uh, CID, and they always leave clues behind. 
financial crimes is usually a paper trail. Right, transactions. It's always transactions. Even when you go to your phone and you click delete, it's, it's still always still a, still somewhere. Yeah. Even when you delete your emails, there's a way to find that information. They now have a cyber crime section at the police force where they can check your hard drives. It's always something left behind. <clears throat> Whether it's through them, Cable Bahamas, or whoever the provider is. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So the information is there. Mm -hmm. It's just latent. You see where someone will touch something and you, you don't see anything but the naked eye. Mm -hmm. But if you go there with your little fingerprint powder and dust and sun all of a sudden show up, fingerprints, yeah? It's there. Rules and regulations are important, but finding workarounds on both sides is often the only way to make the system work. Don't lose sight of the picture. When we talk about the workarounds, cooperation. <clears throat> Let's be real. To get information takes long. You know, they got to go through the AG's office. They got to communicate with the commissioner of police. They got to reach out to um, the head of this department. They got to trickle down. They got to send letter of correspondence to um, the bank, or maybe they have to get after they go before the court. What information do you Information sharing. <clears throat> Prior to FIU, there's a lot of information that needs to be shared discreetly. Yeah? And to get that information, it wasn't a case where you could just come and directly give information. Is you can breach confidentiality. You can't just give a customer's information. You always got to be mindful of that. Unless there's some law to protect you, like say there's suspicious reporting, you can do that like by way of that, or you swear with an order to cover you. But other than that, you can't just go in. Um, we had a police inspector <clears throat> who came to one of our branches, and he came in his uniform. I want to get information on the account of so-and-so. I was like, hey, hey. I say, sir, with the utmost respect, can I ask you a question? <laughs> He said, go ahead. Your head good. He just assumed because he wore a khaki uniform, he could just walk in and just give me the information on so-and-so. You would be in contempt. You would be breaching confidentiality. Mm -hmm. Unless he has a court order. That don't work like that in real life. Maybe you must be watching one of Matlock them or whatever show was on. Yeah, they, they do that a lot. <clears throat> so kind of a good. No? Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, I need that I need that route. I didn't know where not to go. Yeah. Just follow Ginger. Just, just don't go where. Ginger, just wherever she, she go and the free free follow her nugget, she going rest. That's that final spot was down. No, that's not. That final spot should be taken, yeah. Our Waki. Yeah, so. Just play with it. And then, of course, that Miley Butler's dig up, right? They got half of the land. Well, they, they already paid it. They already paid it? Mm -hmm. Quick as that? For kind of, well, of They course. paid it yesterday. <laughs> in one day? One, yesterday morning, one oh, okay. time, it was still in bed. That's it, it was paid. Okay. Excuse you, me. All right. Get it together for kind of. <clears throat> so, if you got a police officer, come to your institution so you can give me the information on this place. Tell them, um, none your mm. None your business, unless you have a, a court order, production order. But how do you authenticate that? How do you say, how, I mean, how do you just look at it and say, this production order is authentic? <clears throat> I mean, because you have, you, you have a lot of who people. Can, who can bring production order? That's the thing. Because you wouldn't, norm, you wouldn't have someone in a, um, in a, a uniform. That's a detective function. <clears throat> you would have someone coming from your, you remember I was saying earlier, Aisha, where you have to get get familiar with people? Or you get a name, right? You get those poisons such as your, yeah, we, we found that out this week. <laughs> So you will have your poisons. That's why I was telling her earlier. Someone important told in my name. I important <laughs> Ma, don't do it. So that's why I, I was telling her, uh, the class earlier, it's important to have relationships. Because when you get these uh, production orders, court orders, MLATs from places like your attorney general's office, from your, hey, what's up? <clears throat> All righty. Your FIU, um, DU. You start to see these names. You get familiar with these people. I mean, the people yeah. on the production order. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, the person who's, who's uh, sending them, uh -huh. you get used to them. Uh, one, uh, one of the things we, we um, started doing is that <clears throat> I would always, on an annual basis, take the staff out to meet these people. Right. So it's not just uh, on the phone. Right. You you know, you will share information <clears throat> readily with someone when you have a relationship, as opposed to, you know, I don't know this person only on paper, but now I can put a name with the face. Name on the face. So when I get this produ production order, I can actually call and say, hey, just checking up on you, you know, um, I may need an extension. I may not have all the information I may need. Because I know you, and don't use the route I did with the chicken's house. You, you were in here when we were talking about that, that bribery. But um, <laughs> when you know people, you could, you could do that. You know when you're running out of time and you got to get that information into them? Yeah. 
But once you can put a name in the face, it's all about building relationships. And when we talk about here the workarounds, it's good when you can instantly call someone up and get information. Think about that for a second. Who likes red tape? Nobody. Because when you got to go to this one, oh, we got to go to the PS and it come down to this one, you got to go to that one. You sitting down there waiting. But if I pick up a call, I pick up the phone and I know Bishop. I have to tell you, Bishop, <clears throat> this is our situation. And I'm the assistant commissioner, please. I need you to tell me if so and so deposited money on this day. You know how much um, paperwork I've just eliminated? So of course, that's offline. I can't use that as evidence. Right, right. Only, hey, what's up, Bishop? Yeah? That don't make sense? <clears throat> At least they would have a heads up. Understand the other side's limitations. There are limitations. Yeah, you need to have, um, you got to understand that because there's only so much information that um, you can give up. Yeah, being mindful that there's confidentiality breaches involved. And of course, that's two years in jail. I ain't going to jail for two years with no police, no inspector walk up in there. And I like, you know, I don't know you, sir. Where is your order? Regulations often prevent financial institutions from sharing the sort of information law enforcement need. Yeah? They need all this KYC and all that information. Regulation says unless you have orders and it's within law, outside of that you can't provide it. Yeah? Yeah? And when in doubt, you do have a legal department <clears throat> or external counsel that you can lean on. Um, when law enforcement subpoenas financial records, they don't always know what they're looking for. There is a myth that all police and investigators um, know finance and banking, how banks operate. That's a myth. <clears throat> yeah? You, as the MLRO, are the subject matter expert for your institution. You should know how, what type of products and services you offer. You should know your financials. Yeah? <clears throat> You don't expect someone who just became a detective yesterday to know all this stuff. Your operation could be unique. And sometimes they would um, have to call you up and ask questions. You would have submitted information to them and they don't have a clue. You remember the other day I was telling you um, in those STIs you got to avoid using jargons? Mm -hmm. So when you send something with 50 jar um, acronyms in it, what do you think the officer who, who don't work in the financial services is going to do? He called you up at Fidelity and said, um, I noticed you said something that you suspected to be based on the FSRC 21 being down. What? And you just wired out a SWIFT uh, 4486. What? You need to break that down. I don't know what's going on. And if it goes to the FIU, <clears throat> they're not going to analyze something they don't understand. You have to have that relationship, though. They have to call you up and say, hey, what, was, what does this represent? I've had investigators on a big model it was before a court right now, and Lord, I, I hope they can resolve that. But anyhow, I don't call the name, but an individual is a high profile case. And every other day they call him, hey, uh, we need to have another meeting on this. We don't understand so and so. And we don't understand so and so. I gave them at least two books, but this big, with documentation. And they still ask me questions at this point. Jesus, I don't see where that case going. <clears throat> More face to face personal communication can help. Remember, building relationships, get to know this person, put a name to the face or the face to the name, have those type of dialogues. Yeah, it helps. The speed of the discovery process and yield more effective results. Ain't no one gonna be sending me no production order, court order, who I don't know. Yeah, because when I get it and it's a new name, I call that particular regulator. Hey, how you doing? Okay, I'm seeing this letter that you would have said. I just want to know, um, you're replacing Stevie. Steve normally sent it to me, okay. And you, you knew? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. I do my little research on that poison because I'm not familiar with you. And when you know, do you don't have a relationship with someone, you tend to hold back. That's normal. Yeah? Confidentiality is always a concern. Speak with internal or external counsel. Remember I told you about that? Wherever there's that thin line, you don't want to breach that. Because you think you're doing something in good faith, but at the same time, you, you're just preparing yourself to go to Fox for two years under the banks and trust um, legislation for breach of confidentiality. When in doubt, yeah? Uh, the MLRO's perspective, the MLRO should establish a good relationship with FIU. That's always a good thing. I ain't telling you to be no snitch. 
but you need to know who these people are. <clears throat> As the key role of the compliance department is to manage the relationship with the FIU and the regulators. Your primary regulators, I ain't tell you go meet every regulator, the ones you have to engage with. Yeah? The examiners who come into my institution, I know every one of them. Yeah? FIU, I know all of them. The persons who you're going to frequently deal with, such as your law enforcement, you need to know these people. The MLR should, be, should also ensure that the line of communications are working effectively, which helps to ensure that requests for information are dealt with in a timely manner. So, there <clears> are <throat> going to be times, believe it or not, if, if you've never experienced this before, you will, where you would need to request an extension. Sometimes they would ask you, and I know you were saying the letters, they always ask, we need the account opening from inception. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them, some people who got that particular institution, that, that organization, right? Why you always ask me for an inception? What's the rationale for that? And then they would always tell me some, some smarty in the background. Is this what you told us to do? I'm like, man, I ain't there no more, but why you asking me for this? Now I got to go back. And I say, okay, does she want an expert now? I know an institution can't find information. Because I was on the next side. I was on your side when um, I would send an uh, order to them. I said, look, you all have that to me in two weeks. And then they come and stench. Um, um, and they, you, you could read the letter, and the letter is saying something like, we are, we are diligently um, reviewing our archives with a view to that. They, look at them. they can't find it. All these fancy words, they just can't find the information. That's all. They're buying time. I said, look at them. They're living on grace. Look at this foolishness. <laughs> eh? Are we are diligently. They're trying all these big words in there to confuse you. So I'll, I'll call them on the phone. Hey, uh, Joan Raman. Yeah, I call her name. I said, Joan, you can't find the documentation. Eh? She said, offline? No, we can't find it. But in the letter, we're saying that we're diligently looking. I said, you, you're saying in the letter, but I know you can't find it. I say, anyhow, I can help you. I don't need everything from inception. <clears throat> Let me give you from the period I'm looking at, perhaps. So sometimes you all be killing people. Because you all would ask, okay, I want account opening from. Because it's intelligence. You oh, might. Wait. Sometimes the question you all ask don't be intelligent, though. No, I mean, no, you listen, know. Randy. Randy, <laughs> you may have something we need, right? Uh huh. And RBC. Maybe looking for some information from someone, so we can yeah. we kind of. I could I, I, in in an instance so like that. So we need all information, but someone else may come and they may need, you know. I, I hear you. Don't break with you. I hear you because there are instances <laughs> sometimes. Let's say for example, the person opened the account um, in 1988, and uh, this is 2019, and they asked him, "Okay, I need account opening all the way back then." Trend. Trend. Mm -hmm. it, it realistically. I don't, well, I mean, if the account is still open, I understand that. But if the account is closed, you know, I only have to maintain the records for at least five years. Right. After the account is closed. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they will go to your database. Some databases, we have purge information after a certain period. Mm -hmm. You know, we purge and they're like, oh, the orders are here. I say, man, relax, man. I used to be in that chair with you. They don't work like that. Five years, but this is what I can provide you. No, no, you got to do this. And I say, yeah, I can't really do nothing. I mean, I I don't need this job. No, I need the job. But I mean, <laughs> it, it gotta be, you got to be reasonable. And that's where you can pick up the phone. This provided you have a relationship. Because don't just call over there. Because some of them, they, they lock you up quick. So when you get that relationship, man, you, know, you come with your little olive branch. Come on, man, Ginger. You, know, you ain't realistic. You want me to go back to 88? Come on, man. Five years, 10 years, maybe. But you want me to go back 30 years? And who can print all them statements? <laughs> but listen, I said... <laughs> I remember there was a production order we went, I, when I was at Jesus. FIU, they said it, and uh, we said, oh, my boy, I want it from inception. And this is out right. of the offshore. I remember going to Goodman Bay Corporate Center. So I say, and I look in the room and uh, I call my boss, but I said, boss, you sure we want it from the beginning? I want it from the beginning. Because I had it. And <laughs> we were there one week photographing, we was in ship, doing ships. <laughs> and I said, boy, and he said, well, what taking you all so long? I said, boss. You say you want it from the beginning? Read up the box number eight. He said, well, boy, I, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't have got it. I said, boy, it be done here. And the people say they copy are breaking down, and they're paying for this. <laughs> and I said, no, no. You got to be careful with you. It got to be reasonable, too. Mm -hmm. All them boxes, you should see us carrying, you know, when the, the UK and the shipment of the Coke. You should see us with the and big the truck with all them boxes no, on the don't back. Don't want to get locked up. That's the thing with us, but you're like, all of a sudden, uh, uh, Anyhow. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that. But you say intelligence. <laughs> intelligence is one thing, but it has to um, produce fruit. 
but intelligence should be um, actionable. Yeah? You don't want to just get paper for the sake of paper. And I like the way you're going right now with having it digitized so you can have it stored in a database because all them boxes, that ain't realistic. We, we have no database. I know you all, you all get you all doing have, some things over there, but what, back in the day, them boxes was a no joke. That's me. I had my time with them boxes. Yeah, I, 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 I mm -hmm. tell you, boy. There was in the whole room. I know. Yeah, so true. I, I know. Yeah. That ain't no fun. It's a lot. It's, 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 it's interesting, though, when you go to some of the boxes and start reading. Man, listen here. Listen, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> because you're talking about cooperation. You could have missed something earlier in your earlier submission to them and going through some stuff. You would say, oh, okay, all right. all right. And later on, but you can do what's called a supplemental filing. Yeah. Even after you to send a, file, um, a report onto the FIU, you could have additional information after the fact. Hey, yes. There's some vital information. I think they would want this. Even they don't have it, at least it's intelligence send it. Yeah? So it's good to have that cooperation. And we were telling I was telling them earlier, it's good to have police friends. It's good to have friends at the AG's office and in the justice system. That's good to have them. Especially on a first name basis. I went in a court before and um Vera Watkins <coughs> was the uh, magistrate. And she was like, uh, where's the officer who's supposed to give evidence here? And I don't play today. That boy's getting seven days in the cell. Uh, and the, the, you know when the, ju the officer got to come up and call the name of the person? Randy Taylor. Detective Taylor. I said, well, I hope this is. And I went there. She, this is you? I said, yes, ma'am. You should send me on my best way. Yes, ma'am. And I got on my little, you know, the school girl. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, give me a reason why. I, I worked the night shift, ma'am. And I, I was tired and I, and I was sweat. But I would never do that with your card, ma'am. Because you know I don't play right now. Yes, ma'am. She said, okay, you ain't gonna do that again, right? No, ma'am. Never do that again. So she said, okay. I can let you over the morning, but you know I'm gonna send you to jail for seven days. Yes, ma'am, I know you're all powerful. I know you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you gotta, you know, you gotta shift gear. But then when you're in court, but then you're not know, in court. But when I walk out of court, I bounce my um, police friend, I go, why did I tell her off? But yeah, like, when I'm ready, you know, you gotta save your face and all that stuff. So the MLR's rule. You're the point of contact between the FIU and, sorry, the financial institution and law enforcement. Everything goes through you. I don't need to talk to no one else. When um, Barry them come, they ain't want to talk to no one else. They want to talk to Randy Taylor. Because when time to send someone to jail, who y'all going to look for? Me. So. You on the phone? Yeah. So. <laughs> the responsible person for logging, processing, and tracing requests, usually time sensitive. They're very sensitive. That's one of the keys too. The information is time sensitive because let's just say for example, you have someone in custody. You only go there for three days. Yeah, unless you get an extension order from the court. So I got three days to wait with. They need to get information from you and everything's time sensitive. Yeah? And the fella ain't changing the story. They are they interviewing him and they need to get some new information. So they come into you, hey, we need this information, or, you know, time is to be on the clock. Uh, the responsible agent to ensure that an SDR, suspicious transaction report, is submitted to the FIU, they are warranted as a result of a production order. Everything starts and ends with you. Yeah? When necessary, you would file a SDR and or a supplemental report. So your SDR tracking, I'm picking up the pace, I know you all want to hurry get the carnival. So the SDR tracking, in the Bahamas, once the SDR is filed with the FIU, the remitting FIU is followed with an acknowledgement of a receipt letter. Mm -hmm. But with you guys, with the new system, you're going to spit that out instantly. So that, that one, have to, you have to wait for them to Everything type it up. Work. Everything is going to be automated. No computers, no no IT infrastructure. See, we could be, we could be. Y'all sharing off, of man. Y'all got, yeah. yeah, I tell you. So they are, everything is good now with y'all. All the salaries going up, the new equipment, everything y'all got, y'all need, right? So usually FIU will follow up with production orders requesting additional information to assist with the analysis. They may come back, and of course, they come into you or the designate. Post-filing the SDR and request to conduct, an, conduct a transaction is received. Immediately brings him to the attention of FIU. Um, so if you got additional information, I told you about that, after the fact, after you report it, you don't wait on it. Don't sleep. Because remember, especially if you know that they have someone in custody, don't slunk. Yeah? You're playing with someone's freedom, <clears throat> and you could um, compromise a big investigation. I remember when they had um, a certain individual uh, um, in custody reference to Pineapple Express. Oh, Jesus, not again? Yeah, huh? Uh, when they called me, they said, look here, I need X, Y, and Z. How soon do you get it to us? I said, boy, I under the gun. 
They said, you think you get it in two hours? I said, what? <clears throat> you only got to walk on water. They said, my meal over you. I said, you sure? Okay. I, I ain't calling this famous now. They said, no, we, we got you. All right. I can never get locked up in this town ever again, right? So they said, you, you get with us. I said, all right. Two hours. I go on research, pull down, copy, do all them stuff. How I deliver to them? <clears throat> they said, boy, you's a good man. You will never get locked up in this <clears throat> in town for the next five years. They said, no, forever. I can ne I'm untouchable now, right? They said, you good, you good. All right. And it's good when you're calling them the favors, though, you know. I had an issue before where, um, this man used to live in um, Fox Hill. And some, one of the crazy head boys from um, Elizabeth Estates, <clears throat> they were going around doing all kind of stuff, throwing rock missiles and stuff, and breaking out your um, <clears throat> glass and stuff. And I don't know if you remember, they, they had slow cars on, I think, on the Fox Hill Main Strip. And they were just vandalizing these cars. It's called the back. Um, and one of my, my car was one of those cars. So I said, man, this ain't making no sense. So it's good when you call it favors. <clears throat> so um, I made a report, and my, my boys are DU. So they were, are you about to say something? Why is he do like this? Oh, that's just a reaction. Okay. So man, they, they, they said, boy, we be, um, one of the fellas who, um, we think who, who, who might have damaged your car. I said, what? They said, but what you know? You, you rolling with us? I was like, yeah. I said, okay, cool. You should see me here. Uh, we kicking out people front door. Ah! Jumping through. And I wasn't even on the force no more. I mean, kicking out door. And I said, look at me running through people front room. Look at me. <laughs> 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 oh, you're on a mile. <laughs> no, no, I mean, I didn't care. I was with my boys. <laughs> I said, look at the four things you say. And he's like, man, we can pay for the car. And I said, yeah. I was like, Miss Kelly or something. Because if we got to come back here, should... boy, I tell you. And of course, you all never heard that story, right? <laughs> that never took place. It was, oh. never, it was never recorded either. It was never recorded either, even though this, yeah, I ain't sure about that. <clears throat> so no, there will be instances where a transaction has to be completed in the absence of a consent. Um, advisement by the FIU. Um, when I say that instance where a transaction has to be completed in the absence of a consent, sometimes you need to liaise with them. Um, if there's a transaction that has to be done, it could be uh, as really, it may be holding up a business transaction, but you have to process it. You may it may be a part of a batch, <clears throat> and if you you and if you hold up that one transaction, advising the client, it could be tipping off. So you may have to allow that the one one off to go through. I don't know if that makes sense to you. That one transaction you may have to um, process mm -hmm. because it may have um, it may affect a batch. Mm -hmm without advising the customer, tipping off. So you may have to let it go. In instances like that, they can understand that. As long as you have um, a complete audit trail as to you know, what took place with the transaction, and you can um, provide them with the documentation and copies. Yeah? Yeah, right at the end? You say, okay, you say it well. And liaison, liaison with the FIU. Even though the FIU does not give consent or uh, restraint freeze order is not obtained, does not alter the position of tipping off. So, you even though they didn't give you that order to say, hey, don't do any transaction, be mindful, don't tip off. So, go ahead with the transaction. Yeah, just don't tip off. But be able to present them with an audit trail as to what took place. That will cover you. Tipping off, you can't get around that. That's automatic 500000 yeah, if you cannot um, uh, stop the transaction, allow it to go through, maintain your audit trail. Yeah, because in absence of that restraint, you, 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 you may have to. There's nothing that can really stop you in that instance, especially when it's close to tipping off. I would rather you let the transaction go through than explain the case of tipping off. It's 500000 Make sense? If you're gonna tip off, just do the transaction, maintain the audit um, information, and provide that to the FIU, and the rationale as to why you weren't able to. Perhaps it was something that, because of the transaction, whatever procedure it had to go through. Yeah, that's reasonable. Make sense, Bishop? All right. <clears throat> this means the firm cannot tell the customer who is the subject of an investigation because you know you can't say, do it. You holding up the transaction. You holding up the queue because we investigating you. You can't do that. Do the transaction. Yeah. 
The firm cannot tell the customer that a transaction or activity is delayed because a report is being made under the, FR, under the proceeds of crime mark. You can't do that. Any FRU or any investigator will tell you, go ahead with the transaction. Let us know after the fact. As long as there's a clear on the trail and we can see what took place. Exactly. Yeah. Don't go telling the customer, boy, did you call um, earlier and they're saying that um, they, they, they're interested in this or fraud scored. Can't do that. It's the reason why I keep stressing that. <clears throat> stressing that because people have been cl came close to really to tipping off many instances. You know? Oh, well, we couldn't because um, he's waiting on the authorities to say to release uh, the wire to do this. You can. No, 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 you know what they always say when you go on bombers here? Yeah? Always put on your mask voice. Mm. You can't help no one else if you can, you know, you can't help yourself. Yeah. Gee. That's it. Carnival Day. Carnival Day. There was a handout, um, you, I, this doesn't apply to you because you wake up there for you. Um, the handout, this is the presentation that was given by the, <coughs> the FRU on the 24th. I think it was a little over a week ago. At the money laundering. Mary Ray didn't scrutinize that. Was this from Query, what she sent to me? Oh, she's another one up from her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? This, you didn't hand out anything for this. Well, actually, um, I'm running out of paper. It cost me. Why are you some email these things? I could do that, but I no one else gives a presentation, by the way. They, they, they go through the book, but I, I just do it because you seem like nice people. That's why I do it. But, um, so you'll email it to us? Hell no. <coughs> Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. <coughs> Sorry? One of the other handouts. Which, you mean this one here? Why are you on the... I, I mean, I don't have enough. I'll see this. We, some folks came in late. And we only did enough for... One, two, three. I think we only did five. So unless you guys want to wait for a minute and let them roll off some more or either that or the next class to get it. You have an option. No? You don't want to? Who? Well, I, I know Bishop does. They were there. Oh, all the Fidelity people. I just put 20 of you all, right? <laughs> so, <coughs> so the Fidelity, I mean, you guys could do it and then the others could do it. Yeah? I could always email you if necessary or you could get it from Ginger Rogers. Yeah, well, number five, she good. She don't want, she, she's, uh, Aisha, she good. Well, he good. So we eliminated those two. So I, I only have four left. Well, I can take a picture of it. Right you can take a picture of it? This is a whole, that's a lot of pictures. <laughs> Wait, let's print it. Maybe I have four copies. So if you, if you want to hold, hang around for a bit, here is, you can get it. Uh, this is the, I think I did, uh, I think about 15, is this 15 minutes? Pass the back. Thank you. Just let me know if you got enough. Yeah, I think I got two extras. And so with these four right here, so you guys want to, but the fidelity, y'all will cover. Because um, Bishop does got those covered. I'm worrying about Aisha. Um, FIU is good. You got a copy, right, Deloris? You got 20? Are you also in the finale? Okay, so I guess I have to do you separate. Oh, uh, you are in the And you just don't stop. Then she right in front of the room, forget me. Okay, anyone else that get one of these? Yeah. I have one. Do you want to pass them back? Yeah, okay. Just only three. Yeah. 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 And you and Ginger are just gonna, you're supposed to share or do that. Okay, tell you what, why don't we just let them run off a few cups? I mean, we still got a couple minutes. Yeah? Okay. 
So let me try to get a couple more. Who didn't get one of those uh, cooperation panels? Oh, that was two. I just want to have 15 copies. Do I just stay here? That's strange. Someone hogging up something. <laughs> Someone hogging up something. <laughs> Someone put in my leg, right? Can I use a raise something? I get a square. You sure? Man. I get a square. That's strange. Are you sure you ain't moving nothing, right? Okay, so let me see. Okay, I have to go anymore. One, two. How many more have we need? Okay, Bishop need one, and you two ladies need one. So that's Okay, all right. Okay, how many more? Can I borrow your. Um, the cooperation one. Huh? Let me run that. So five of each, then. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop, you say you can share, and now, now you change it.
Everyone and gone? <laughs> they gonna wait? What happened? Okay, everyone is gonna try to coffee stuff. What did you want to do with him? Okay, he's uh, you got two left. We're doing the the other one um, cooperation. You could tell them to minus the other ones they could just get it from. So um, he's he's already copying it now. Oh. So he just had to change a uh, put new paper in it. It should only take another minute or so. All right, close that. Mm -hmm. but they had to go head to Rody. I mean, like they ain't participating. I mean, it's like they just wanna. Okay, I guess. Uh, oh well. So any of y'all going to none of the events, carnival events tonight? No? Yep, 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 they're going to go and... 
after being in the hot sun all day, jumping up and down, and you don't have anything in church anymore. Church. Everyone sign the register, yeah? My full. Mm-hmm. Huh? They say on your way. Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hm